purpose of this video is to discuss the line item cash in accordance to generally accepted accounting principles. And at first glance, you would think this is straightforward, and, and, and for the most part it is, but there are some things that we need to be careful of in terms of reporting cash as the line item on the balance sheet. So let's begin with what cash is. And uh, cash includes all coins and currency that we have in the business, uh, including the petty cash stuff, any deposits at a bank, whether that be checking or uh, savings, that's considered part of your cash line item. And it can also include negotiable instruments such as money orders, uh, any kinds of checks, personal checks, certified checks, uh, cashier's checks, all those are considered cash, and as well as bank drafts, okay? Now, one thing to be careful with, even though we include checks as part of the line item of cash, in other words, if you have somebody's check and you haven't deposited, that's still considered cash. Uh, obviously, once you deposit that check and it goes into the bank account, then it eventually becomes cash in your bank account. But what you have to be really careful of is if you have any post-dated checks. So if anybody gives you a check with a future date, then you cannot consider that a, a cash item. Okay, instead that's still accounts receivable until that date arrives. Um, so now that we've discussed what are some of the common cash items, um, let's now discuss what is not cash. So be careful not to confuse uh, short-term investments with cash, okay? there's If you have an investment, uh, it should be considered separate from the cash line item. Uh, money market fund accounts, those are not considered cash, even though there is an exception. Uh, if you have a money market uh, account, money market account that has checking privileges, okay? You're able to write checks on the account. Then at that point, then we go and consider this as a regular checking account and thus consider it cash. But the idea is this, <clears throat> the default response for whether money market funds are cash or not is no, unless this exception applies, okay? Also certificate of deposits or short-term papers, uh, treasury bills, commercial paper, all these items, you gotta be really careful uh, because they're not considered cash, okay? So do not mix them up. These are usually investment items. All right, so here's another little twist to it. So even though these items right here are not considered cash, they may be considered what is referred to as cash equivalent, okay? But here's the, the important thing for you to know. Cash on its own is a line item on the balance sheet. Cash equivalent, even though it sounds like cash, is not considered cash, okay? So you have to, if you are going to classify something as cash equivalent, you may do that, but you got to understand that that's not the same as cash. Now, what makes it tricky is that sometimes on the balance sheets, companies combine the two. They go in there and say, the li there'll, be, there'll be a line item that says cash and cash equivalents on the balance sheet. Now, if a company chooses to do combine these two, then somewhere in the notes, they need to disclose what the actual cash amount is, okay? Or separate what the cash equivalent is. So it makes it weird, okay? Because we have, what, what I'm saying is, that there's some things that are considered cash and some things that are not, <clears throat> but then there's some things that are considered cash equivalents. Yet these things, even though they get to the level of cash, cash equivalents, they're not cash, but they're sometimes combined on a line item on the balance sheet. So I know it sounds kind of weird. So what, what are some of these cash equivalents? Well, if any of these short-term investments that you have have a maturity uh, of less than three months, then at that point, you don't have to classify it as a, an investment. You would be able to consider it as a cash equivalent. And the thought is that this investment is so close to maturity, less than three months, that it's almost as good as cash is the way you want to think about it. And the, the, the reason for that is that as, a, as we get closer to the maturity date, the risk of the value changing 
changing decreases and the there's an interest rate risk that is reduced because as we get closer to maturity it's unlikely that interest rates are going to change drastically from what they are currently so we would say that these kind of instruments have a minimal interest rate risk uh, and you've seen this in other courses where uh, you've been taught that as interest rates go up the value of certain financial instruments go down so there's that inverse relationship and the, same, the opposite is true. As interest rates are coming down, the value of those instruments go up. Well, if you're so close to maturity, at that point, that interest rate risk is all is very small. So because of that, under gap rules, we're able to consider or treat this as a cash equivalent. Okay? Uh, but again, I want to make sure we are very clear. Cash is a very strictly defined line item. Okay, and, and, and for our purposes, uh, financial reporting purposes, we got to make sure that we don't include more than what needs to be in there. We can combine cash with cash equivalents, but don't forget, these are not the same things. Okay, a couple other items that I want to, uh, I want you to keep in mind um, with regard to cash. Sometimes companies have what is referred to as restricted cash. So you may have a certain amount of money that you are putting aside to meet future obligations, okay? To meet uh, any debt that is maturing in the future. So if you have that cash separated and restricted, then that needs to be that needs to be disclosed separately from cash. It cannot be included as cash, even if you have the money in the same bank account. So you know you might have a hundred dollars here and you might have fifty dollars. Uh, restricted so if you have a hundred maybe that's not a good number let's say you have hundred twenty dollars at the bank account uh, and 50 of that is restricted well if that's the case then out of that one hundred twenty dollars you would have to report 70 as cash and then in a separate line item 50 as restricted cash okay so it, 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 the idea that of where the money is at is not what makes you have to disclose that it's the fact that if it's restricted you have to disclose it separately same thing with a compensating balance like uh, at a bank so some banks require you to have a minimum balance uh, on the in the account and if you cannot use that money because it's required to be kept at the bank uh, then you have to disclose that you have that compensating balance and separate it out from cash line item okay um, and then another quirky one is if you have a bank overdraft, in other words, you've taken out more money out of a bank account than was in there, meaning you have a negative balance, then you would have to classify that as a liability. All right, so the default response is if there's a negative balance in any bank account, you have to classify it as a liability. Now, I know that sounds strange, but uh, companies have accounts that are set up with... Um, a specific amounts that they don't want to spend more than and if for some reason they go over a little bit uh, the bank funds that extra amount and then when the fund uh, I'm sorry when the bank funds that extra amount in essence the bank is giving the company a, a loan right a temporary loan so by default we're going to classify that as a liability that negative balance now where uh, we may not have to classify it as a liability is if you have other accounts in that same bank so if for some reason you have uh, other accounts in there that can offset that amount meaning you have positive balances in other in other bank accounts in that same bank then at that point you would be able to offset you know let's say that this is a, a negative 30 here and you have a uh, positive 200 in another bank account at that at that same bank then what you would report is uh, not a liability anymore you would just report cash of 170 at that bank okay but that's that's an exception okay this is an exception don't don't treat this as the default treatment the default treatment is if you have a liability as i say i mean if you have an overdraft then that's a liability so i'm going to very clearly state that this is an exception and that's real important because the way you have to think is you always got to think about what the default treatment is and then 
afterwards ask yourself if the exception applies in the same way that we did with money market funds over here the default is that a money market account is not cash it's an investment type but there's an exception if it has checking privileges then it is a uh, then it, it can be considered cash